How pack sheds on fruit and vegetable farms are designed has an enormous impact on a farm's profitability and the ease of day-to-day -day operations. A well-designed and brightly lit area that is large enough to move around in improves worker comfort and safety and increases efficiency when moving product. Because of the overlap between human pathogens and plant pathogens, a space that is well ventilated and easy to clean will both improve produce safety and extend product shelf life. This video shows how a farmer turned an old dairy barn into a sunny and cleanable year-round pack shed. My name is Howard Prusak. I moved here in 1971. I bought this farm in 1979, and that farm became certified in 1976. So it was Vermont's first certified organic farm. We grow about seven acres of vegetable crops, and then another five acres in uh, cover crops. This was always a dairy barn up until three years ago, which meant there were cow stanchions and concrete feeding troughs, and it was dark and cold and not a, a fun, happy place to be. And we sort of worked around it and used it for mostly storage. We bought the, this part of the wash line before we did anything in the barn, and um, which is sort of what motivated me to improve the situation. This part of the barn was uh, where they kept the heifers, so it was just a tin roof sort of a uh, lean-to extension off of the main barn. I was looking at it and I just had, gee, if we took off all that tin roofing and covered it with plastic, it would be a, almost like a greenhouse because there was the sun. I got to work on fleshing out the concept and you know, of getting this converted into sort of like a solarium. We used a double wall polycarbonate uh, material for the roof and the walls, and which is a standard greenhouse product like GE Lexan or something, and you know, it's good for 25 years or more. It gives a nice translucent light, so it breaks up the sunlight so it's not burning, it's not like through glass. Even on a cloudy day, it's, you can see it's just kind of nice in here. And then the doors were an old pair of uh, French glass doors that I actually found when I bought the farm. It was sitting in the shed. At some point, the plans involve a, a loading dock out there and so the doors will open and we just go out onto the loading dock and we would load or unload off of our truck. In the upstairs here, uh, when I was looking, that was all old crappy barn board and that's the upstairs of our barn. And I said, gee, if we take down that old crappy barn board and put up the same polycarbonate, then we're gonna get light into the upper barn. We get like a twofer out of the deal. And uh, we have an observation area, you know, people can come watch us. <laughs> Back in the day when it was a dairy barn, it was built like over, you know, several generations. And actually with like three levels of concrete floor in here. So it made it impossible to utilize the whole floor space with a pallet jack or anything. So the first thing we decided to do was to level out the floor and pour a concrete floor. And uh, we had some crazy guy with a sledgehammer like breaking down the, the concrete and the stanchions and trying to level out with the chunks. We actually wound up using all the broken concrete to fill in the low spots. As he's pouring, I said, so where's the smoother? You know, are you gonna make the floor smooth? And he said, no, I don't have one of those. And he had guys with brakes and boards and they're kind of working backwards. And you know, it's like, okay, it looked okay. It's not easy to clean. It's not a polished concrete floor. It's a rough concrete floor. So, well, it's just a barn. I figured that's good enough. Okay, but we didn't realize, you know, that's not what I wanted. And now the problem is, you know, to, to redo it, we're pouring another three inches of concrete, and you'll, it's just a lot of money. So that, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, it's smooth enough for the pallet jack, but as far as sanitation and sweeping, it's really a pain, because really uh, the vacuum is like the only way to really vacuum out the dirt and the dust and uh, so you know the housekeeping and the maintenance uh, I definitely would recommend people that they hire a, a known concrete specialist and make sure the floor gets smooth
it did open up the whole barn for usability and we use the pallet jack a lot. We even drive trucks and tractors and whatnot in here. It's become the center of, of the farm in that way, so it's super usable. And uh, I, you know, I obviously would never go backwards. And then the next year, we decided to go with this aluminum uh, foil backed insulation to further start working on the project. And now we got a really fairly tight um, work area. I'm just a big fan of this uh, foil backed insulation board. It is just such great stuff to work with and boom it's up and it, it lowered the heat usage from the year before by like 50 percent and it kept the temperature constant. This whole barn was filled with squash and pumpkins and um, we let it cure in here. We installed a propane heater and uh, we keep it at a, at a nighttime temperature, about 55 degrees, uh, to get the squash to cure properly and not get too chilled. And that made a huge difference in our squash shrinkage uh, over previous years. In terms of food safety, having a lot of light in the work area just allows you uh, to see what's going on and, and it raises the bar of, how, of, what, of cleanliness and the state of the produce is, and it's easy to clean up, you know. Uh, when you can see the floor well and see the equipment well, so it just allows us to wipe and, and clean everything on a regular basis, so that's made it easy. And then we just added this summer the uh, root washer, the Wilsey, and we got that because it fits in with the operation in terms of lengthwise, and we're able to put it on the end of the wash line utilizing the same packing table the water gets is contained, it's not splashing all over the place like some of the, the big barrel washers. And um, it's just, we find it, was, it does a job. It does a really good job. So this is basically almost all of the washing that we do on the farm is uh, right on this line. So we put through, I think, 20,000 pounds of winter squash went through this line this fall through here. And I don't know how many thousands of pounds of carrots and beets and potatoes through, through that. And then we have um, uh, stainless steel sinks that we set up. Everything be in one spot here, the automatic, the washing line, then the hand wash line and the sinks. And by having everything on the concrete floor that we, we use the pallet jack to move the produce around and everything stays clean that way. Comes in on pallets, we wheel it in, clean it, either goes into the cooler, it goes right on the truck, depending on what we're doing. One of the things I, you know, we had thought about, but we didn't have time or the money, uh, at the time of the pour, I guess I would have designed um, a floor heating component to it, and I would have put uh, poly pipe in the floor. And instead of going with the um, propane hot air eater, I would have been in a small boiler and, and heated the floor. And then if that was the case, then I would have put insulation under the floor as well. If uh, any advice for anybody to do it is like, you know, think long term and, um, and, and, you know, even if we had put the pipes in but not even installed the boiler, the pipes would have been in the ground, yeah. you know, it would have been waiting for us. And, uh, and the pi plastic pipe is pretty inexpensive, wouldn't have cost much to do this whole barn with uh, plastic pipes. It, it depends on budget, you know, your budget starts with everything. Well, how, you know, how much do you have to spend and then what's the most bang for the buck? So for me, the most bang for the buck, which was like the first thing we did, with, which was the solarium, it was under $4,000, I think, we invested in this, and uh, which is probably about the le least expensive component of the whole project, but yet it gave us, you know, the most bang for the buck. What do you need? Do you need storage? Do you, is it just a place to clean produce? What are you going to be? What do you think you're going to be in five years in terms of your operation? So you sort of have to work backwards from that and then, you know, bang for your buck thing. So definitely, you know, roof, light, um, floor, uh, water, you know, do you need a water line dug into the barn? Ele electrical, you know, is it a crap electrical? You, you're gonna have to look at your electrical wiring to make sure, you know, you, you can handle, the wiring can handle the load. Some things are budget driven, but some things are so economical to do the first time that you really are almost compelled to do it. A builder told me years ago, the first build is your cheapest build, okay? You know, to do it first, you go back three years later as a redo or an extension, it'll cost you more than, 
you know, the first component. So it's much cheaper to do it the first time when you got a crew there and you're ongoing. It's like, you know, originally, I thought, well, I only needed a concrete floor on half the barn, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you realize, well, th it really almost costs nothing to do the entire barn. And, uh, you know, so you need to pay attention to those things. Do more than you need now. You're not going to regret it because in building, it doesn't cost more. You know, even if you're building from scratch and you're thinking, I'm going to build a, you know, a one-car garage, that's all I really need. It costs almost nothing to go for the two-car garage, you know, and use that as your wash, the, you know, your barn than the one-car garage. And so it always overbuild, you know, if you can. You know, really just think, think long-term, overbuild, and, and then you, you never regret having too much good space. You know, nobody ever said, I, God, I wish I didn't build that big a barn. I'm glad we took the leap and made the investment because it was one of the better things we did. And this will be here for, you know, forever now. It's a long-term strategy.